this little pig ran wee 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 all the way home. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Welcome once again, my fellow manipulators of digital fate. I'm Richie, this is Capricorn, and well, today's deck is called Slaughterhouse because it's all about controlling the board and killing absolutely everything while also being a reanimator deck. It's kind of the first control deck, reanimator deck I've ever built, and you wouldn't think those two things go together very well, but this deck is kind of perfect and absolutely merges them perfectly and uses its reanimation spells to actually bring back its control elements and allow those to be reused so that you're just completely controlling the board the whole time. Uh, if my voice sounds a little wonky, it's because, well, I've been sick lately and the fact that this deck is named Slaughterhouse is kind of appropriate because I feel like death. So, um... I apologize for that, but I wanted to make sure I got this deck out to you. If uh, you guys noticed, I only got like one deck tech up in the last three days, and that's because I have been sick. I've been trying to recover like crazy, uh, and because I only got one video up in the last three days, the YouTube algorithm really hates me right now. So I'd like to ask a favor, and even if you're one of those guys that doesn't ever click the like button and you think it's lame that you know content creators ask you to do it, if you could just this once hit that like button, and maybe leave me a comment down below letting me know that, uh, you know, you care to help the algorithm out, because right now the algorithm hates me for missing a couple days, and uh, it's really tanking my numbers, so I'm gonna try and get caught up as best I can, I'm trying to get this video out to you guys even though I'm really sick, but um, hopefully I'll be, I'll be well enough, soon enough, that we can get back on the horse and get the daily uploads uh, coming again. So, you know, with that being said, you know, like the video, please. I would appreciate it greatly. Subscribe if you're new so you never miss an upload because tons of crazy decks are coming just as soon as I get better. But this one, this one is really good. This, this one, I did not cut any corners. This one is nuts and it's an idea I don't think many people have thought of. Uh, we don't slack on any of the control elements in order to include some of this reanimation stuff. And you'll you'll see in the breakdown, like, honestly, the deck works super well. Everything synergizes together super well, and it's pretty gnarly. Also, catch me live Monday through Friday over on Twitch, because if I'm alive and I'm breathing, I'm there and I'm streaming. So, you know, I wasn't today, because I'm barely alive and breathing, but, you know. There's that. So um, I'll see you guys soon. I can't even think straight right now. What am I doing right now? This is a deck tech, right? Oh, and this video is brought to you by Wonders of the First. But I'll tell you about that later, after we break down the deck. Now I need a nap. So let's do that. So I apologize if my voice is a little wonky, I've been kind of sick lately, but uh, this deck is really good and I want to get this out to you guys, so I'm going to do my best to go over it here. The idea is I wanted to build a control deck with the key cards in the deck being Overlord of the Bale Merc and Rite of the Moth. And it doesn't look on first inspection like either of these cards are meant for control decks, which is what I think makes this deck so interesting. But really, if you dig down into the way that we're using them here, it is very much fundamentally a control deck and it's kind of awesome. So first of all, Overlord of the Balemark. You can pay it for, uh, play it for just two mana, comes into play with five impending counters on it, and then eventually, you know, you remove one of those at, the, at each end step each of your end steps, and then it becomes a 5-5 creature eventually. But when it enters the battlefield, you get to mill four cards. This also triggers when you attack, when, you, when it enters or, or when you attack. You mill four cards, and then you return a non-avatar creature card or a planeswalker card from your graveyard to your hands. So first of all, I want to hone in on that planeswalker part, which I think is a part that has been somewhat ignored. So if we want to play this in a control deck, we can lean a little bit into the whole Super Friends style archetype and using planeswalkers that are controlling planeswalkers that have control elements to the cards and use Overlord of the Bailmark to dig and find those planeswalkers to contribute to our control synergies. Uh, but then there are also some very key creatures 
that we can not only mill into the graveyard and get back and use them as control elements, but we can just discard them from our hand to use them as control elements and then potentially get them back later with the Overlord of the Bailmerk as well. So the most notable being four Harvester of Misery, five four menace for five mana. When it enters the battlefield, all other creatures get minus two minus two until end of turn. So it helps sweep the board against aggro decks while giving you a relevant threat. But also for just two mana, you can discard this and give anything minus two minus two at instant speed. So it works as really cheap early game instant speed removal as well as being a big possible threat later on and a creature, right? And then we also have Trumpeting Carnosaur, a 6 mana 7-6 seven, Trampler that when it enters you get to discover 5, but you can also pay 3 mana and discard the Trumpeting Carnosaur and it deals 3 damage to target creature or planeswalker. So both the Carnosaur and the Harvester of Misery have ways to discard them in order to turn them into early removal spells that can help solidify the board state, keep aggro off the board, and just basically control the game so that we can drag the game out until we draw subsequent copies of these and then they become really relevant threats, especially the Trumpeting Carnosaur because of the Discover 5 in addition to being a big trampler. But the Harvester of Misery being a big 5-4 menace creature is nothing to scoff at as well, and sometimes getting to sweep the board again a little bit later on just as incidental value tacked onto a creature is kind of nuts. But the reason these cards are so good in this deck is they're both control elements that can work as removal early on and then end up in the graveyard so that we can get them back with Bailmerk. And it gives us more targets to also hit so that when we're self-milling with Bailmerk and getting something back, it's another thing that we can pull out of the graveyard that contributes to our control synergies specifically while still being something we can hit with Overlord of the Bailmerk. So by running some Planeswalkers and running four copies of both Carnosaur and Harvester of Misery, we're effectively able to use Overlord of the Bailmerk as a tool that can dig and find removal pieces and put them into our hand so that we can control the game. So this deck very specifically is able to use Overlord of the Bailmerk as a control card uh, and, and I think this might be the only deck that can pull it off because of the combination of those discard removal creatures uh, and some of the Planeswalker control elements that we're using. But in addition to the Overlord of the Bailmerk, we're also running four Rite of the Moth, which is also nuts in this deck. Because if we self-mill it with Overlord of the Bailmerk, we could just play it for its flashback cost later on and still get the value. And... Even if we're not self-milling stuff with Overlord of the Bailmark, we're discarding Carnosaurs and Harvester of Miseries into our graveyard to use them as removal early, so we can just pull them out of the yard later with Rite of the Moth, and not only get, you know, relevant threats onto the field, but also get some more control elements popping off. You know, sweep the board on turn 4 by pulling out a Harvester of Misery with a Rite of the Moth, that we discarded on turn two to already kill, you know, one of their creatures that they played can be absolutely devastating against aggro. So whether whether you're just using Rite of the Moth to get off a Harvester of Misery one turn earlier, or to pop a Carnosaur on the field as an insane blocker that also discovers, or to get some of our Silver Bullet cards as well, uh, Rite of the Moth, really, really insane. And I think these two together specifically work very well as a way to kind of create a control engine within this deck. And it's really interesting because I've never used reanimation cards in a control deck before, but it just works so perfect here because of the kinds of creatures we're specifically targeting. We can even use Rite of the Moth to bring back an Overlord of the Bailmerk, so that can bring back something else like a Planeswalker. It can get really, really crazy. So. These guys are the backbones of the deck and the concept, but the rest of the deck entirely revolves around uh, control elements, sweepers, removal, the whole nine. And Overlord of the Bailmark's kind of good with that stuff as well, because if it comes down early for its impending cost, it's not a creature yet. It can just sit there on the field, eventually becoming a game-winning threat. But in the meantime, you could play your sweepers and the Overlord is still there. You know, your sweepers don't hit the Overlord, so there's just so many different ways in which both of these cards synergize so well with this very specific control build, and I kind of love it. 
But let's start at the bottom of the curve and we'll talk about all of the card choices. So we've got one copy of Ghost Vacuum. This is a card that is sometimes a dead card, so I'm only going to run one copy. But this deck, since we do have so many different sweepers uh, and so much card advantage value built into the deck, we can afford to have one card. One card sitting in our hand that might be a do-nothing, depending what what deck we're up against. We can't really afford to have more than one, but we can afford to have one. So the one copy of Ghost Vacuum does make the cut because of that, because not only does this shut down very specific decks that rely on the graveyard really well, whether it's Delirium decks or Reanimator decks or what have you, but it's also a really crazy win condition later in the game. All of a sudden you just, you know, you drag out the game with your removal, uh, with your control options, and then later in the game you get to six, you just sack this thing, you get back a ton of value, you're mostly probably removing their creatures, their Atraxes, their Atalis, or their, you know, mid-range creatures, aggro creatures that they're getting out, and then all of a sudden you have an insta board later in the game that you can just win with, so it's a really cool one of that's sort of like an alternate win condition here, and again, the only reason we're playing the one is because this deck has so much value baked in, so many sweepers that get two, three, four for one value, so many planeswalkers that get multiple cards for one value, just everything in the deck gets so much two for one, three for one value that we can actually afford to just have one of these and take the risk that maybe we get a dead draw at some point against the wrong opponent because the rest of the deck just has so much value baked in. Moving on to the two drop slot, in addition to four Overlord of the Bale Mercs, which can always come down on two if we have nothing better to do, we've got eight removal options. Four Harvester of Miseries, which can be discarded for two mana to give something minus two, minus two at instant speed. And that instant speed is crucial against Mono Red right now, so you might want to hold on to this and, you know, respond to them trying to cast a spell on their Slick Shot or something by killing it with the Harvester. We've also got two Virtue of Persistence which allows us to give minus three, minus three, and gain two life for two mana as a removal spell, except we don't get to do it at instant speed. But we do get to gain two life, so that's not nothing, and that can be really good against aggro as well. Alternatively, if we need another way to get stuff out of our grave later in the game to just get win conditions on the field and we get seven mana, we can then play the Virtue of Persistence from Exile, which is nice. We've also got two copies of Push and Pull, because again, for two mana early on, this can destroy anything. And since this isn't giving like minus two or minus three, uh, it's just straight up destroying a targeting t target tapped creature. This removal can be used on things that the other removal can't, maybe the occasional shield read or something like that. So it is important to at least have some spot removal that isn't, you know, that doesn't care about scaling, that can kill some of the most, like the biggest threats on the battlefield. And it's nice that push also has an alternate function similar to Virtue of Persistence, where if we don't need the removal, we can play the pull side for six mana, bring back two creature cards from a, a single graveyard. Usually they'll be ours, but there might be some situations in which we can grab their stuff and it will be better. Um, and just use them to alpha strike and win the game outright. Um, and even though those creatures have to be sacrificed at end of turn, we get to keep any value that those creatures entering the battlefield bring us, so we still get to sweep if we bring back a Harvester of Misery. We still get to discover five and then keep whatever we find with it without having to sacrifice that uh, when we get a Trumpeting Carnosaur back. So push and pull, another really, really good option. I like the idea of running two of these and two Virtues myself, but you could go four of one or the other and I wouldn't fault you. Uh, moving on to the 3-drop slot, in addition to 4 Carnosaurus, which can be discarded for 3 mana to do 3 damage to a creature or Planeswalker, we're also running 3 Liliana of the Veil, which can act as removal, it can act as a way to whittle down our opponent's card advantage in their hand, it can also give us a way to discard things from our hand so that we can get them into the graveyard as reanimation targets. Uh, and then if we can get this up to, you know, 6 or 7 loyalty, we can activate the ultimate and really take out, you know, our, uh, half of our opponent's board and put them on the back foot so bad that there's no way we can keep they can keep up with our card advantage after that. Uh, in addition to these spot removal options, we have three temporary lockdown and one split up. Now, you could go the other way with this. You could go three split ups and one temporary lockdown. But I think because aggro is so heavily dominant in the meta right now, that three temporary lockdown is right. 
That being said, I do want to include at least one split up because there are situations in which this can kill things that the temporary lockdown can't, especially if you're up against some kind of a mid-range deck that, again, is running something like Shieldred. Um, you'll always be able to kill any one creature you want with this, no matter what, so you want to keep that in mind. Almost view this as not really a sweeper, but as spot removal that doesn't target, that gets around hexproof and ward, like if they have a Valgavoth on the battlefield, and it's the only creature, you can just name untapped or tapped whatever the Valgavoth is, and make sure it dies. And since you're not targeting it, you don't have to pay the ward. So, even if you're just using it like that, it's good. So view it as spot removal that gets around Hexproof and Ward, and that has this upside that sometimes, in certain situations, will also be a sweeper. And if you start thinking of the card like that, it gets way, way better. Um, yeah, and, and keep that in mind when you're trying to make decisions about what you should use and when, uh, because it's really interesting the kind of play patterns that develop around this card. And I definitely want to explore more decks using this in the future, because I think it's really interesting. But moving on, we've got the five drop slot. We've got three copies of Sunfall. I wouldn't fault you if you wanted to go four here, but we're going to go three because we have so much other removal. You know, exile all their creatures. If we need to exile specifically, this is really good. <coughs> Ugh. I'm sick. I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm sorry, but the show must go on. <laughs> And then you also get to make an Incubate token, right? And that can add to your board presence, which is nice. We've got one Quintorius Cond, which for five mana gives us a four loyalty Planeswalker. Every time we play something from Exile, we get to drain to. That can matter a lot to, you know, buff up our life total to try to come back against aggro in certain situations. And between, you know, milling and getting things back with Overlord of the Bale Merc, uh, it's actually pretty easy to hit this, even though there's only one copy. It's pretty easy to hit some of the, the one copy stuff. At least easier in this deck than in typical decks, because this thing could just keep getting you value. Uh, we've also got one copy of Vraska. Uh, this is nice. It's just more removal. You can proliferate, and since we do have a healthy number of Planeswalkers in this deck, being able to proliferate and increase the loyalty of multiple Planeswalkers can be nice. And then we've also got one copy of the Eternal Wanderer. It can flicker our creatures, such as, you know, Carnosaur or Misery, to repeat their Enters the Battlefield triggers. It can also just, you know, give us two-two double strikers, uh, or act as like a pseudo-sweep in a way itself, which is really nice. We've got one copy of Kaya, Intangible Slayer. Just another thing that could be milled into the graveyard with the Bale Merc and brought back to our hand and be a late-game win condition or just an insane amount of late-game value. Apparently the uh, the server is sick as well. The last card is Valgavoth Terror Eater. We are just running one copy of this. I originally considered running more of these since this is kind of a reanimator deck, right? We've got four Rite of the Moth, we've got two pulls from Push Pull, and we've got two Virtual Persistence. Uh, but ultimately, I think there aren't a ton of ways to discard the Valgavoth, but it's too good to not at least play one in a deck that's running four copies of Rite of the Moth, right? So we are running one copy, and we can get this into the graveyard way more consistently than you might think, because we can discard it with the Liliana, and if we don't have a Liliana, we can Trumpet in Carnosaur and hope to hit a Liliana, or Quintorius Cond discover four, hope to hit a Liliana, or just dig with an Overlord of the Bale Merc, hope to hit a Liliana. And then Overlord of the Bale Merc's also a way where if we don't have Valgavoth in our hand yet, we could potentially self-mill it and get Valgavoth into the graveyard. So even though there aren't a ton of things that discard from our hand to give us an outlet to get Valgavoth into the graveyard, there's actually a good number of ways of getting Valgavoth there when all is said and done. So I do think it is worth having the one copy it's just really, really good. If, if you get in the right scenario where you can get this on the battlefield, you just win. So it's absolutely worth it. And I just love how Rite of the Moth can be milled as one of the cards with Overlord of the Bale Merc and then just be in the graveyard and sit there waiting to be used on a later turn to bring back something like Valgavoth. So the deck's pretty gnarly. The mana base is very specific. If 
If you'd like to see the mana base, I'm not going to go over it here because, damn it, I'm sick and I want to finish this up and just get it out to you guys. But the uh, the entire deck list will be in the description, so check out the mana base there. You do need a healthy amount of all three colors of mana, so it is kind of specific. Uh, we also have a good amount of surveil in the mana base so that we can, you know, put stuff into the graveyard to help fuel some of these some of these synergies. Uh, yeah, that, that's the deck. So... I'm going to let you guys check out the games, and I'm going to go back to sleep so I can get better and then do more decks for you guys. So I will catch you on the flip side. I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Wonders of the First. Wonders of the First is a brand new collectible card game similar to games like Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon, featuring a unique action-based resource economy that helps avoid pitfalls like Mana Flood or Mana Screw, and a battlefield containing multiple realms that unlock over time as you fight for control of the stones. The first 400 card set is called Existence and will launch to retail in the fall, but playtest team starter kits are available to order now. And they haven't forgotten about all you collectors out there. The game contains alternate borderless art variants, as well as highly sought after limited edition numbered prints, culminating in a one of one stone foil. And the best part is that the developers have a community first approach, with eight print and play decks available on their website, as well as a version of the game available on Tabletop Simulator, all for free. For more information, be sure to check out WondersCCG.com today. That's WondersCCG.com. Alright, this I think is fine. Virtual Persistence on 2. Discard the Carnosaur on 3. Uh, and then we just gotta get to Sunfall. We do have the Parlor to try to surveil into something we need. So we'll set that up. Um, oh, we gotta dump it. As much as I want to keep it, we need to get to our fifth land as soon as possible. And that's going to take an extra turn if we keep it on top. Alright, pass the turn. We've got another Harvester of Misery, which is pretty nice because we can use this at instant speed. Take out the bat. Play the land, pass the turn. We've got a split up. Could be really good under the right circumstances. Bandit's talent. Let's discard a Sunfall. Pass the turn. Not the best luck there. But at least if we have a bunch of control and we're keeping cards in our hand because of that, it's going to take a lot longer for him to start damaging us with stuff like Bandit's Talent. Alright, we'll get rid of the other Sunfall. Since we're not going to get enough mana anytime soon. He's got really three Bandit's Talents. I mean... We definitely don't want to get rid of the lockdown. We're going to eat the bandit's talents with the lockdown. Right? Let's just dump the split up. Well, split up could be good against shield root. Let's dump, dump virtue. Alright, I've had enough of these shenanigans. Get out of here, Bandit's Talent. I've had enough, Lily. Those who get in my way tend to regret it. Don't. I guess we dump a Carnosaur, right? Yeah, we'll dump a Carnosaur. I still want to keep the split up in case of a Shieldred. Maybe I'm really paranoid about that, but... Alright, we're going to keep Lily on top, actually. And 
we'll pass the turn. We can ride of the moth for a Carnosaur next turn. Which is really good. It's probably going to make us discard it right here, though. That's fine. That's fine. We still get to use it when we get to six mana, so... One. Chose the wrong day to cross me. Play our own Lily. And we're just gonna outpace his Lily. I'm tired of your secrets. That's the plan. Demolition field, sure. Drop it. Uh hmm. Kind of a bummer. Guess we just have to uptick, huh? You won't be outsmarting me. Bandit, you're snoring so loud, buddy. You needs to chill. I'm tired of your secrets. Well, we got a restless fence. We'll uptick the lily. And pass the turn. Does mean we have a creature. We can swing in at their lily next turn. Duress. Sure. <laughs> we all have things we'd rather. He's gonna have to demolition field the restless fence, right? Oh, let's see what he does. Take action. We'll fetch our swamp. And then we will uptick to discard our Valgaloth. I'm tired of your secrets. Don't overthink things. Oh my goodness. Minus six. Target a player. Two, 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 two. Either lose all of your lands or your lily, sir. Actually, I probably should have ride him off first, huh? Yeah, I think that was a mistake. I think that was a mistake. Chose to keep his lily too. Oh, one of your friends has to leave. Man, we are having the worst luck today. Worst, worst luck. Can't get to our sixth land. <laughs> drawing exactly the spells we need our sixth land for, whether it be the top deck pull. You or the right of moths in our yard. Alright, so we'll play Harvester. And then we will uptick. Okay, he's done. He's done. This actually looks pretty good. We can Virtue of Persistence on turn 2 if we need to. Temporary Lockdown on turn 3. Let's keep 7. We don't really have a way of getting anything into the graveyard. To play a turn four right of the moth, but we could top deck something. We'll see what happens. Heartfire hero. Well, Carnosaur is in there for right of the moth now, but I think he probably just kills us this turn. 
Because, you know, Leyline is dumb. Oh, no, we got a scamp. We've got a scamp. Felonious Rage. Is he going to sack the scamp because of that? Do five to us? I feel like he should. Alright, so he's gonna go all out. Do we try to gain two life by playing Virtue of Persistence now? Or do we wait and play Harvester of Misery at instant speed to blow out one of his spells? Hmm. I think... Ten... So close. We gain two life, go up to 11. Heartfire Hero does one to us. We go down to 10. If he's got a plus three, plus O oh spell, which is most of them, he can swing in for five and five, and we die. So I think our only chance is literally to wait and Harvester of Misery in response and try to take away some of that buff, which is not good. Slick shot. <laughs> All right, so we take we go four, and then we go lockdown. And we survive at five, maybe. The virtue of persistence is could get us back up to nine. So it's possible. Pass a turn. We've got a harvester of misery for instant speed thingamadings. Uh I guess we go. Do we write of the moth for a carnosaur? Black, black, white, one. Yeah, I think we do. We do lose the opportunity to play the Harvester of Misery at instant speed. But... All he could really have to get around that is Slick Shot because the carnosaur is a blocker. So a parlor dump something. Do we want to dump this? I don't think we want to dump that. <sighs> I think we'll just do this. Well, no, that costs us a life to do, doesn't it? Yeah. We're just going to pass the turn. I want to hold up the ability to use Harvester of Misery, and I also want to hold back the Carnosaur as a blocker. Because if we just stay alive against Mono Red, it's really all it takes. So we'll do that. It's minus one damage to us. My turn. Alright, here's where we'll go. Bailmer. Try to get something else we can play. I guess we just get back a Harvester of Misery and hold on to it. Yeah, I think we swing at this point. He doesn't have any man lands out. If he plays a creature with haste, we have the harvester. Let's try and uh, end the game quick at this point. Yeah, we just have like all of the value in the world here. So 
So yeah, we just hold up the harvesters. We could right of them off from the yard to get back like an overlord. Not worth it though. We have to take a point of damage to do it. At this point, every single point of life is valuable. Heartfire hero, sure. So we will Harvester of Misery this guy. My turn. Play another land. And he's gonna scoop. We got you, Mono Red. This actually looks pretty okay. We've got removal on two or a bail bail mark on two. Um we just don't have a turn three play. We've got some expensive stuff. But Bail Merc should be able to find something. So we're going to keep this. We're going to start with the Restless Vents. Duress is us. Probably hits the Harvester, if I had to guess. No. He hit the Frasca. Okay. Leyline of the Void is rough with Bail Merc, though. I don't know if we're getting out of this one, boys. I don't know if we're getting out of this one. I think we still need to play it, even though we lose whatever we mill here because of the ley line. And that is painful. Painful, painful, painful. Save the harvester to, to hard cast if possible. Those who get in my way tend. <laughs> Each player discards a card. Well, we're not playing the Kaya anytime soon. It sucks because we lose it forever. But I mean it kind of is what it is. We can't really do anything about it. Let's play the parlor. I mean, we're never hard casting that. Let's just get rid of it. Let's get down another bail mark. Just lose a whole bunch of stuff. It is what it is. We just want them as their eventual 5-5 win condition creatures. And that's that. Drop it. Discard. He probably plays a shielder this turn. I guess we have to get rid of the Harvester, right? We have to be able to keep the push. We also need to keep the land just in case. All right. Let's do this. Go for the throat. I mean, sure, I guess. That Liliana is going to be a problem. And there's she older, so we have to get rid of the land, keep the push for she older. Ugh. Ugh. Pass the turn. How did he use the six loyalty on the lily? That's the real question here. He could separate two piles. He should know that we need both lands in order to cast push. And we really want to push Shieldred. it. If he upticks, we get rid of the Virtue of Persistence. Alright, let's see. Your very eyes. Oh, the lands and the overlords. I did not expect that. Well, if we kill Shieldred...
Yeah, I guess we'll we'll keep our lands. Get rid of those guys. I don't love it, but we need to push the shielded, so. And then Restless Reef can finish us off in a few turns, which is also kind of worrisome. But it is what it is. At least this way, as we top deck into answers, we can actually cast them, probably. Alright, so we push the Shieldred. Now it comes down to, can he kill us with a Restless Reef and one Might token? It'll take him three turns. Doesn't attack with the Reef. Interesting. Alright, we'll rock his theater. Dump the Wanderer since we're two lands away from being able to play it. We'll scorn the Might. It's our last best chance for peace. What are, you, what are you doing, Ajax? Makes another Might token. Does he attack with the Reef this time? He does, okay. I don't know what cards he has in his hand, but he seems to think this is his best route to victory. Kinda wild though, I mean a fight? And you think you can win? Main deck Leyline of the Void is ballsy. Very ballsy. It just happens to hurt us really well. Alright, puts us to one. Guess we do this, and then we discover four to drain and hopefully hit something that can protect us. Oh no! <sighs> That's depressing. It's probably the one card that couldn't actually help us here. Good game, Ajax. By good game, I mean awful game, but whatever. You can have it. Who plays with main deck Leyline of the Void? Come on now. And is he only running blue literally for the Restless Reefs? Would not be surprised. Alright, this actually looks pretty good. We don't have any red for Quint. But we've got either Push or Harvester of Misery on two. And that should be enough. We'll keep seven. We'll start with the concealed courtyards. Make sure we don't risk those coming into play tapped by waiting to play them later. Hello, Crow Jane. Pushes sorcery speed, but the harvester discard is instant. So we can just hold that up. And we will just continue to hold that up. And then we have right of moth, so we could actually discard the harvester and then bring it right back with the right of moth. is kind of gnarly. Shard Mage's Rescue. Yeah, yeah, I figured. I figured. 
Uh, we'll just sunfall. Yeah, we set up for the sunfall. We could have right of mothed, but the harvester coming back onto the battlefield doesn't kill the scavenger since it has both the buff from the aura and the counter. So we'll sunfall. Pass the turn. We're still at 15, which is nice. Harvesters. We have a lot of potential here. I think we're just gonna quint. And see what we can hit off discover. Let's dig over here. A right of the moth? Sure. We'll get out a free boy and drain for two. I mean we don't get to kill anything with the minus two minus two, but that's fine. That's fine. Scavenger comes down. What else you got, Crow Jane? Feather of Flight. Whopping six mana. Flying Menace Trample. So many things we could do. We don't have double red to play Carnosaur, which is kind of a problem. We are going to attack with everything. Can't really block, so he's just going to take the 7. A little uptick to make a dude. I require your expertise. Uh, we will pass the turn, hold up Carnosaur, and hold up making a Might Token with Mirex. Even with a bunch of potential auras to buff this guy up, I don't I don't think he can kill us quick enough. I really don't. Manifold mouse, sure. Hmm. Do I care? I guess. Don't know if it's enough to matter. He can swing for 10 this turn. Alright, he's just going to... Oh, wait. What? I'm so confused. But you didn't give it double strike. You messed up. You messed up. You messed up. Uh, hold on. Oh, from a single graveyard. So I can't pick the Manifold Mouse and the Carnosaur. That's kind of a bummer. It's okay, though. 
We'll hit the Carnosaur. We'll get a Harvester of Misery. And he will scoop. Alright, alright. I guess this looks good. We don't have any two drops, but we have plenty of land. A couple of three drop piece of, pieces of removal, so... We might be okay. We're gonna start with the theater. Uh, sure. We'll put the right of the moth in the yard. We just want to find, like, sweepers, temporary lockdown, stuff like that. Swift spear. And monstrous rage. Swings in for seven. Play the courtyard. Can't play any removal yet. I guess we just play this and then, I don't know, he might just be able to kill us this turn. He'd have to have the exact right cards, but still. Get back a Liliana. Slick shot. Scamp. No spells. Down to eight. There's the temporary lockdown. That's what we needed. Lockdown dodges our overlord of the Bailmer. And our opponent scoops. Alright, we don't have any two drops and we have all pain lands. I think we actually mulligan this. <laughs> now we have all tap lands. But at least we have two drops. I'll keep it. Put back a Carnosaur. We're just going to have to use our Surveil to find a land, hopefully. A Black Spell could potentially be played on turn two, so we're going to start with the Raucous Theater. Uh... <laughs> If we dump it, we have the smallest, smallest chance the next card is an untapped land and we can play Overlord next turn. But we have a much bigger chance that it takes us forever to get to our third land. So I actually think we got we have to keep it, unfortunately. Which is kind of a bummer. We only have like seven tap lands in the whole deck. And we got like half of them. As our only lens. Is what it is. <laughs> Another one. Alright, you're going away. You're going away. Okay, Valley might. Valley might call her. Might call her. Might not call her. Make up your mind, the girl's waiting for a date. Brogard Mentor. So, uh... I guess temporary lockdown makes a whole lot of sense right now. Eat him up. He's down to four cards. We can very easily play Liliana or discard the Carnosaur to deal with whatever he plays. Probably Liliana, since we have two. Burrowguard Mentor. Alright, Elegant Parlor. <laughs> I mean, we're gonna keep it. So that we can just make sure we get to our fifth land. With the and eventually sixth I've for the Carnosaur. Wow. One of your friends has to leave. Yeah, I think we have an overwhelming amount of control, and I don't think there's a whole lot you can do about it. Hop to it. Sure. And Phineas. Play the theater. Let's see what we surveil into. We're going to dump the Eternal Wanderer. I think we make him discard his last card. Right? Let's 
Let's do this and see what we hit first. Uh, I guess we get back Carnosaur. Then we will eat up the Phineas. Uptick to make him get rid of his last card. I'm tired of your secrets. We will dump, I guess, the Carnosaur we just got. I was thinking about dumping the extra Liliana, but he's clearly going to swing at our Liliana and kill it. So if we don't top deck a sixth land, it would be nice to have the option of playing the second Liliana instead. Right. Buffs the dudes. Brings us to 14. Well, there's our land. So we will Carnosaur and let's see what we hit. Quintorius. Seems pretty good. And then Quintorius will discover. Hit a right of the moth. Bring back a Carnosaur. <laughs> Okay. Okay, bro. Nice. And then we'll get a Lily. Drain for two again. And then we'll down tick the Lily and make him sack one of his tokens. Which is actually relevant. That means if he wants to kill a Planeswalker, he has to lose his War Leader now. Whereas before, he could attack with his three tokens instead, and we could only block two. Sunfall, huh? What else we got in here? No creatures yet. No creatures yet. Interesting. I mean, I don't think... We sunfall. Don't think that's correct. I actually think we just play this and Some use it to make him get rid of another creature. For once it's not my fault. Oh, I've always hated it. This seems fine. And then we'll attack in with the one with the finality counter on it. Because that's most likely the one he wants to kill. So if he does kill it, he doesn't get the opportunity of taking out a blocker. Make his decision a lot harder. And if this one goes to the graveyard, we can bring it back with the right of the moth. Which is really nice. And my dog is still snoring, because that's what he does. And my dude is done. Thanks so much for checking out my channel. I'd like to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons over at Patreon. Without you guys, this channel would not be possible. So honestly, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of your contributions. If you haven't yet, like and subscribe. The more likes we get and the quicker we get them, the bigger this channel will grow and the faster it will grow. I'd love nothing more than this channel to become something very special for you guys, but it's entirely up to you how fast that happens. Also, if you'd like more deck text, that's somewhere over there. And if you'd like to see what else the channel's been up to lately, that's somewhere up that way. Also, subscribe, circle below, do all the things.